Learn to code well on TikTok, video number one. Go to this website, click start coding, choose Python, create, and this is where we're gonna code for the rest of the series. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number two. Remember to go to this website and let's start writing code. First thing we're gonna learn is the print function. This lets us display a message on the screen. So what you're gonna do is type out print, and then in the middle, you're gonna put whatever you wanna print out. Let's type hi, run our code, and hi is displayed. You can type whatever you want, and it gets displayed. You just wrote your first line of code. Now that's pretty cool. You can write messages in caps, like I did over here. You can also type more than one print statement. We're coding. Code well on TikTok, video number three. Go to this website, click start coding, Python, create. And this is where we're gonna be coding. Let's write some Python code. Today we're learning about the input function. The input function lets us get information from the user. So just type the word input and then whatever you want to ask the user, let's ask what's your name. And then when you go to run your code, you'll see the question pop up. My name's Maya. You can ask other questions as well, like how old are you? If you want to know that, you run your code and then I can tell you. Legit, you can ask whatever you want. Like, where do you live? Uh, maybe I won't answer that input function. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number four. Do you notice that I had to put my message in these quotation marks? Bam, bam. These quotation marks help us to define a string. If I took these quotation marks out, our code would break. So when we go to run our code, we'll see error. That's because we didn't put a string into the print function. To fix this, all you have to do is put quotes back in. Notice how I'm using the single quotes. And when I go to run our code, everything will work fine. So strings can be defined with either a single quote or a double quote. So what is a string? A string is a sequence of characters, text, that we put inside of quotation marks. Congratulations, you just learned strings. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number five. Today we're learning about numbers in Python. There are three types of numbers, int, float, and complex. An int is a whole number, positive or negative, without decimals. These are all examples of integers, aka ints. A float is a number, positive or negative, that contains a decimal point. All these numbers contain a decimal point, so they are all examples of floats. Complex numbers are written with a J as the imaginary part. These are all examples, but to be honest, we don't use this number type too much. In the next video, we're going to use numbers in our Python code. Get ready, y'all. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number six. Type. Well, Python has types. <laughs> Today we're learning about the type function. The type function returns the type of the specified object. So for all the previous videos we were coding here, but now let's do some code over here. Type number three and press return. So that's the number three. And if we look at the type of three, we'll see it's an int. We just learned that ints are whole numbers with no decimal points. Now 3.0 does have a decimal point. So if we look at the type of that number, the type is gonna be a float. And that's because of the decimal point. And now for the final number we have, we have the complex number. And you can see it has that J right there. So if we look at the type of 3J, we'll see that it's complex. Numbers, type function, check. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number seven. Becky has 22 kids. If there are three rooms in our house, 
How many kids must go in each room? So off the bat, to solve this problem, you might think we do 22 divided by 3, and then we print this on the screen so know what answer we get. So when we go to run our code, we see 7.3. However, 7.3 kids? I don't think we should chop up kids. So let's look at the type of this number. The type of this number is a float. I think we need a different type than this. We need a whole number, not a number with a decimal point. So let's convert this number into an int. So all you have to do is type int, and now that number is now an int. So now let's delete that type part, and when we print it out, we should get a whole number. Nice! So the number of kids that go in each room is seven. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number eight. So I am super excited for today because today we're learning about Python variables. Variables are containers for storing data. So on the first line of our code, I created a variable called name and made that equal to Moana. On the next line, on line two, I created a variable called num1 and made that equal to 3500, which is an integer. And then on line three, I created a variable called num2 and made that equal to 54.89 which is a float. Now we have everything we need to create our first full program. Variables, check. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number nine. This code will calculate how long your toilet paper will last. Let's create two variables. And remember, variables just hold values. So let's assume that the number of sheets in a toilet paper roll is equal to 160, and how many sheets you typically use when you go to the bathroom is six. Now we need to get some information from the user so we can use the input function. Let's ask the user two questions. Let's ask them how many rolls do you currently have and how many times do you visit the bathroom in a day. We'll save this input in some variables so we can use it later on in our code. In the next part, what we'll do is we'll actually do some calculations to calculate how long the toilet paper would last someone. Thanks for watching, y'all. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number 10. So in the past video, we wrote these four lines of code. And now, y'all, we just have four more lines and we have finished our first program. Let's go! So let's start off with calculating the total sheets that the person has in general and also the total sheets that a person uses in a day. So total sheets is the number of sheets in a roll times the number of rolls you have. Now your total daily sheets is how many sheets you use times the number of bathroom visits that you do in a day. The number of days your toilet paper will last is total sheets divided by your total daily sheets. So y'all, if we go to run this code, we'll see we have an error. In the next video, we'll fix this error. Learn to code well on TikTok, video number 11. So we're back to our toilet paper calculator, and last time we had a bug. In the error message, it lets us know that the type of bug is a type error. So let's start printing out the types of our different variables. So we see the type of num sheets and rolls and how many sheets you use. They are both ints, however, when we print out the types of num rolls you have in num bathroom visits, we see that they're strings. What? So even though we typed in numbers, what the input function did to those two variables is it converted them to strings. So to fix our code, let's actually convert those two strings into ints. We also make this variable an int. Now let's try running our code again. So let's enter in some numbers. Yay! Learn to code well on TikTok, video number 12. Now let's make two improvements to our code. So when we print out num days, the number we get back is a float. Instead, let's make it an int. So to do that, just type out int and surround the whole thing in parentheses. Now we get back a whole number. Yay! Let's let the user know what this number means. So inside the print method, we add this string, the number of days your toilet paper will last, and then we add a comma, and then we put num days. So if we run our code from the beginning, 
we'll see the first question is asked. We give an answer. The second question is asked. I visit the bathroom maybe seven times in a day. And then now it lets me know the number of days your toilet paper will last is 342.